I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe, and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. Ahoj všichni. So the other day I woke up and I had a bunch of Instagram messages telling me that I was in an Honest Guide video. What? Was I like walking in the background? Were we on the Charles Bridge? Did my hair look okay? I hope I wasn't eating Trdelnik. I don't eat Trdelnik. Turns out they had shown a clip of one of my old videos to demonstrate what tourists get wrong about Prague. Many tourists and visitors, when they come to Prague, they believe that it is legal and okay to drink alcohol in public. Many guides actually tell them that. One of the best, most freeing aspects of being in Prague is the ability to drink alcohol in public. <sighs> okay, so first, like I said, this is one of the first videos I ever made. And secondly, I admit that this is not the best channel to tell you where not to get totally drunk on your stag party. I'm also not going to give you advice about exchange offices. My goal is to compare life in the Czech Republic to life in the United States and to sometimes show you what I find shocking or interesting or different, like drinking in public, which I see a lot here, just being honest. But I was wrong and Honest Guide was right. There are many places in Prague where it is designated illegal to openly consume alcohol in public. So I would definitely follow his advice when you come to Prague and not drink alcohol in those designated places, even if you see it happening all around you. So because I have a reputation to uphold, I feel it's important to correct on the record other mistakes I've made to give my foreign audience an accurate depiction of this city and this country and this culture in the hopes that one day you'll all come and visit to experience it for yourselves. Just not all at once. But before we get to all of the mistakes that I've made, I have a quick announcement for you. If you are a Czech or Slovak university student, graduate student, or a professional who wants to rapidly upgrade their CV in the field of international business, this might interest you. International Business School Americas is looking to enroll Czech and Slovak students in their international business and management programs. And so they reached out to me so I could spread the word to my audience. They're offering scholarships for you to attend their intensive three-week winter and summer programs that are offered at five university and business schools in countries all over the world. These scholarships will cover 60% of the tuition. These programs cover advanced topics in business management, business strategy, financial decisions, corporate policy, marketing management, project management, communication design, and innovation, and many more topics that will make you competitive in the field of international business. Now, if this interests you, I've made a much more detailed video about it, and you can watch it here. And I also have more information on my website, and I'll put the link to that below. Right now, IBS is accepting scholarship applications for winter 2022 to attend the State University of New York, one of the most respected education systems in the United States. Not only will you be immersed in an academic program, but you'll get the opportunity to visit local businesses and improve your network of business professionals from all over the world. Like I said, there's a lot more information in the longer video I posted, so please do check that out. Okay, on to my mistakes. Let's start with the um, more life-threatening misinformation. In my Chimoji video, we erroneously identified this mushroom as a psilocybin mushroom, a magic mushroom. But many commenters pointed out that this was in fact just a poisonous mushroom, which will in fact kill you. Possibly. Unclear. Lots of different opinions in the comments. First of all, I did say don't eat it. But I take your point. This commenter was worried that people were going to take my word for what kind of mushroom this was and ingest it and harm themselves. And she thought I should correct the information. So I'm going to say this once. Never take mushroom advice from this channel. And you should be fine. I thought it was clear when we were using an app in this video to identify poisonous mushrooms that we don't know what the f we're doing with mushrooms. But consider yourselves forewarned. In the less deadly food category, we have the smajenka, which I erroneously called a chlebicek. 
And boy, were you all quick to point out how wrong I was. Let's go over the differences, shall we? Smazenka consists of a slice of bread with what looks like an egg omelet on top, and it's got pickles and mustard and onions, and everyone says that it sounds disgusting, but I think that sounds delicious. Well, Hlebicek, as far as I have seen in display windows, um, can be many different types of open-faced sandwich. And the original one consisted of a slice of bread, almost like French bread, with potato salad, and some ham, and some salami, and some Edmental, a hard-boiled egg, and a slice of tomato. True story, one time uh, we had a party at our house with a lot of Czechs and Slovaks, and we set up sort of a buffet table, and we bought all of the ingredients of a typical Lebicek, but we had them like out unassembled, because in America you kind of like go and assemble your own sandwich at a party, and nobody touched them. They didn't know what to do. I think they thought we like forgot that we were supposed to make it, and they were just like, oh, maybe we should just eat something else. So that's what a Lebicek is. It's like the, a pre-assembled, beautiful little um, open-faced sandwich. While we're on the topic of not knowing what you're eating, in this video we went to Brno and Hansa wanted to try the traditional Moravsky Brabets, which translates literally to Moravian Sparrow. It was so big and meaty that you would almost assume it was pork. And you were all very quick to point out that I was a dum-dum and it was in fact pork. I don't understand, are you trying to trick foreigners into eating pork when they really want sparrow? If anyone can tell me why they call this vrabets, please let me know in the comments below. While we're in Brno, another hot tip from the viewers was that I was a fool to take my car all the way down the ever under construction D1 all the way to Brno, when you can easily go to the train station and buy a ticket. It takes two and a half hours by train and it'll cost you less than 300 crowns. And the train is super comfortable. You might want to wear a helmet. In my Dream Brno video, I said that Brno was the historical capital of Moravia, and you were all very quick to jump in and say that no, Olomouc is the historical capital of Moravia. I'm gonna to have to blame this on the Wikipedia page, which said that Brno was the historical capital of Moravia since the mid 1600s, and before that, Olomouc was the historical capital. This mistake I also attribute to my American education, which taught us that history basically began when Americans defeated the Nazis in World War II. Before that, <laughs> on that topic, I have not yet had the pleasure of traveling to Olmotz, but I am a big fan of stinky cheese, like really stinky. So if you can give me any tips about what to do and what to see in Olmotz, please put it in the comments below. In this video, I mentioned that a lot of the touristy restaurants in Prague list wine by the deciliter on their menu. And so I was charged 80 crown for two deciliters of wine, and I was really angry with the waiter. Many of you pointed out that I don't know how to speak English. And if he had actually charged me $4 for two deciliters of wine, I would be getting a fantastic deal. He was actually charging me for two deciliters. Deciliter. A deciliter is a lot smaller than a deciliter. I'm gonna chalk up this mistake to my growing up in an imperial measurement world. To this day, I just don't get the metric system. In this video, we erroneously labeled our sleeping politician Schwarzenberg as a native German and a native German speaker. But some of you pointed out that this was just a political smear campaign by his opponents to make him seem not Czech. He was actually born in Prague and he is a native Czech speaker as well as a native German speaker. Apparently in their homes they used to speak both. Because he comes from a noble family, um, when the communists took over, he had to emigrate to Austria. And so he spent several decades of his life speaking German. And so apparently his, his dialect is a little bit more archaic Czech and maybe has a little bit of an accent to it, but it's understandable considering he spent a lot of his life in a German speaking country. Anyway, I started to research the Schwarzenberg family and it is fascinating. If you would be interested at me trying to make a video about that family, let me know in the comments. And our deepest apologies to the sleeping prince for spreading fake news. 
In this video, Hansa mistakenly called the Moravian and the Slesian birds chickens when they are in fact eagles. It was a joke, but so you gotta clear this up for the people who don't know. And we heard a ton about this from the Moravians. Side note, we never get complaints from the Slesians, only the Moravians. Why is that? And lastly, in this video, I compared the American school system with the Czech school system, and I said that in America, students were a lot freer to challenge their professors, to challenge what they're taught, to speak up for themselves and their own ideas, and that the Czech system values authority, and you are not right unless you agree with your professor. I thought it was a good thing. I think that's a good quality in Americans. And as soon as I read the first comment, I knew I'd made a big mistake. Perhaps the biggest problem in the United States right now is that everybody thinks they're an expert at everything. Nobody believes they're doctors, nobody believes they're scientists, nobody respects their teachers, everybody thinks that they can just come up with their own facts. And I wonder if this is not a result of this type of education system. Many of you pointed this out to me, and this is what I love the most about this channel, because the discussion that I have with you in the comments um, really challenges me to think about my own country differently, to think about the Czech Republic differently, and it's just a really fun conversation. And I love reading your comments, even if I don't get the chance to respond to each one of them, so please keep them coming. And I promise to keep trying to correct my mistakes as you point them out, because I wouldn't want to put any foreigners visiting the Czech Republic in harm's way. If you like this video or you like any of my other videos, here's how you can show me. First, subscribe to my channel. Second, hit the little bell button right there so you get notified every time I make a new video. Third, if you know anyone who's interested in Czech culture or maybe an American's perspective on Czech culture, send them one of my videos and spread the word. That would make me feel really happy. So, Thanks for watching. Uvidimi se prišti tiden. Ahoj.